Yes, Escondido, California is the most affordable city in San Diego. However, we're not gonna be talking about the pros or all the amazing things about Escondido, no. Today, we're gonna be talking about all the cons as to why not to move to Escondido. So we're getting after it right now. What's up, amazing people? I am Liz Lepore here with the Mortgage List team located out of San Diego, California. And if you're looking for the channel that's talking about everything you wanna know about what it's like to eat, live, sleep, and play here in San Diego, then this is the channel for you. You definitely wanna click that subscribe button and tap that little bell so you're reminded every single time we release a new video because honestly, we do it every single week. My team and I are receiving phone calls every single day with people just like you thinking about making that move here to San Diego, whether it's just moving from one city to San Diego or from a different state to San Diego. You definitely wanna reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text or an email, whatever is easiest for you. We definitely got your back when moving to San Diego. Now, let's get after all the cons that come in with moving to Escondido, California. So first off, where is Escondido? So Escondido is technically about 30 miles north from downtown San Diego and about 30 miles south from Riverside County. So like Temecula, Menifee, Murrieta, cities like that. So it's right in the middle of San Diego. You're gonna find Escondido in between some neighboring cities such as San Marcos, Valley Center, and then Ranch Bernardo, which is technically not the city name, it's more the town name, um, but that's really where you're gonna find Escondido. Escondido is pretty massive, so it has about 151,000 plus people in the population living in Escondido right now, and it does cover quite a bit of miles when it comes to Escondido, meaning that you could literally go from one side of East Valley Parkway, taking all the way up to West Valley Parkway, and it's gonna take you about 15 minutes to cross the entire town before you get into Del Dios Highway. So Escondido in itself is pretty big. But honestly, a lot of people are finding that Escondido is actually a lot more affordable than San Marcos, than Valley Center, and then in comparison to Ranch Bernardo. And so when we look at Escondido, you're gonna be finding a lot of lakes and wineries, um, a lot of places to eat. So you wanna definitely check out my other videos that I've been making with regards to the cost of living and how it compares to other cities. But enough about the positives and all the other things about Escondido. Today, we're gonna to talk about the negatives. So starting off with number one, and that's gonna be the weather. Look, if you're from a different city, let's say like Texas and where the hot is kind of just a regular every single day, you're probably not gonna think too much of the heat. However, here in Escondido, when it comes to something over like 90, 100, that is something that you're going to anticipate a lot throughout June, July, August, and even into September. So at some points, the weather is not that big a deal because you're constantly going to be looking at like 70 to 75 degrees. But when it gets cold, it gets cold. And when it gets hot, it gets hot. So we're talking like heat wise, you're looking at June, July and August, like 90 to 100 degrees. And with the heat is gonna come in with the Santa Ana's. So with the Santa Ana's are gonna come with fires. Uh -oh. So in Escondido, you're going to find that you're gonna have fires as a possibility because of that weather. So as a con, you're looking at where in Escondido you're actually located. Do you have a brush around you? Are you up or close to Valley Center? Is it a higher fire zone? Um, are you located technically next to a ditch, which would technically consider you not eligible for hmm. some type of insurance for fire insurance because they think that that is a higher fire area even though there nothing has ever happened there. Stuff like that is all weather related. So when you're looking at the fire or the heat or the cold weather, cold weather, you're gonna be looking at like 40 to 50 degrees. That may not be a big deal if you're coming from New York. However, here in Escondido, getting to like under 75, I mean, is just way too cold. You definitely need a sweater, a blanket, and probably another sweater because it's not what we're used to here in San Diego and it's definitely not what we're used to here in Escondido. Okay, so let's keep going on that con when it comes to the weather. Well, it's gonna be the rain. So technically speaking, in Escondido, you're not gonna have a whole bunch mm. of rain. This isn't Seattle by any means. However, rain does honestly shut us down because we just don't know how to drive in the rain. We have so many car crashes when it comes to the rain coming out because all we're used to is sunlight on the regular day of like 70 to 80 degrees. And so when you start looking at like having some rain, the streets are not used to it. And so because of that, we have a tendency to drive the same way that we would drive when it was nice and warm. And we don't adjust a lot of the time when it comes uh -oh. to it's raining. And so because of that, we end up 
what we've talked about before on this channel is having a lot of car pulls. So that's actually when you end up having a car not following directions, not driving carefully. And so they drive so uncareful that they end up literally boom hitting that pole. And so therefore, in the lineman's world, which is where my husband's at, they actually end up having to go fix that pole. So it's really important that when you get to Escondido that you're aware that yes, it's going to be hot. Um, yes, we're gonna have some rain, but you're not gonna have as much rain here in Escondido. It's really more so like under 12 inches of rain in the entire year. And honestly, you're gonna find over like 270 days of just nice weather. And um, where it is in Escondido at about 85, if you travel outside of Escondido about 10 minutes, go to San Marcos, it's not 85 anymore. Even though you're the next city over, it's gonna be more like 80 to 75. And if you just go on the coastal going out to like, let's say Carlsbad or Encinitas, you're talking like not even 85. Now you're talking like 70 or even 65 sometimes depending on the weather on that day. So one thing that you definitely want to notate when it comes to Escondido is that our weather is pretty consistent in being hot. And it's gonna be like that pretty much the entire year. I mean, right now we're sitting in January and yesterday it was 79 degrees. Today it's gonna be 77. And this whole week it's going to be 75 up to about 81 and we're in February. So these are typical months that we're going to expect. When in other places and other cities, it's a lot of snow. Right now, we got no snow. We have a lot of sun. So when does it actually rain in Escondido? A lot of the time, you're gonna find that rain really is gonna happen kind of like the end of February, early part of March. That's typically when the softball season just gets started on our games. And when those games get started, then they're just gonna get rained out. And now we're gonna go late into March, probably about April when we start making up those games because just a little bit of rain honestly just destroys our field and therefore now we can't play for about a week just because we, it was raining for one or two or even three days. And then when you go further down in the months for the year, you're gonna be looking at more rain coming in like the October and November months. Again, during winter ball season, that's actually typically when you're gonna find some more rain again where you're gonna have some more car crashes, but then more so at the same time, more details as to how you cannot play on the fields because now they're too wet. So um, like I said, it's not common that we have a lot of rain, but when it does rain, it does kind of shut us down when it comes to our ball fields and when it comes to like making sure that we're driving a lot more cautiously. Okay, so now on to the next con on moving to Escondido and that's gonna be number two at transportation. Look, here in Escondido, you gotta have a car. I mean like over 80% of San Diegans in general have a car, that does not change here in Escondido. In Escondido, just to travel from East Valley Parkway, which is right on the border of Valley Center, up to um, East Valley Parkway and El Norte, that right there, all the way up, going through East Valley Parkway, through the entire city, going up to West Valley to get you all the way over to Del Dios, where we have Lake Hodges, which will take you over to um, Rancho Santa Fe. I mean, just that spot, which is the Escondido part of the city, is gonna take you like 15 minutes just to travel from one side of the city to the other side of the city. And while we have a whole bunch of parks here in Escondido, honestly, you're not gonna be traveling by walking to any of these parks. Odds are you're going to be jumping inside your car, getting to one of the parks, and honestly, because we have so many parks, odds are that you're not gonna to go to the same one. Um, so my favorite parks here in Escondido are gonna be Kit Carson because obviously the softball fields. And then we have Ryan Park because that's really close to where I'm at. And then you end up being able to use their fields to also play softball. And then of course we have just the um, small little play parks where you have the playgrounds and things like that, such as like Felicita and then the Eureka Springs Park and then going across town over to Jasmine Dean. So that is something to be able to look forward to, to be able to take your kids to. But again, you're not gonna be walking and odds are you're probably not even gonna be getting on your bike and going over there either. You will find a lot of the time that gas in general when it comes to Escondido, depending on where you are in Escondido, can be a little bit in variance. You could be looking at prices in comparison to like $2.89 per gallon up to about $3.59 
per gallon um, for a gallon of gas in Escondido, but it varies so much because Escondido is a big city. And so therefore you're going to find a lot of different gas stations and they're always competing for your price. And so right now, when we were filling up our gas, we were finding that it was at 317 a per gallon per gas. And that was like in the middle of town. But if you go to like the borderline of Escondido and Valley Center, you're going to find that the gallon of gas is closer to that 359 mark because you're traveling from the top of Valley Center down the hill and getting to the first gas station. And so in general, because Valley Center only has three gas stations, the first one that you get right off the hill is gonna be typically the most expensive. So of course you can always have your car. Technically speaking, you can also take like the bus, the transit, North County transit, things like that. Um, we don't have a train per se that comes through Escondido. We have train tracks, but nothing actually follows through there. Um, we have the ability of like taking things um, every now and then. I honestly have not seen a train in Escondido in a really long time. So maybe they still do exist. Um, you'll have to definitely comment down below if you've seen one, because I personally have not in a while. Um, and then of course you have the North County Transit as well as another option where you can pay for your bus pass to be able to take you in and out of Escondido. Again, there's a whole bunch of bus stops if you wanna use the North County Transit to be able to take you inside of Escondido. The other thing that you're going to definitely wanna look into is being able to see how far your um, actual home is going to be in comparison to like your job. Because in Escondido, as we were talking about, just to get from West Valley Parkway to East Valley Parkway, we're talking like 15 to 20 minutes just in that drive. So imagine if you are in Escondido on the borderline of Valley Center and um, Escondido and you have to go to Carmel Mountain or you have to go to Mira Mesa. And while you think that on a map, it's not that big a deal, transportation, just the mileage and the time it's gonna take you to get from that spot to Mira Mesa is literally like 40 minutes. And depending on what time you're getting on the freeway and whether you're using or not using the carpool lane, I mean, that is going to get a lot of time out of your day. And I'm not talking like just the 30 to 45 minutes. I'm talking like closer to that hour. So if you're moving to Escondido, you definitely want to check out the different areas. I've done multiple videos talking about the different homes and the different communities that exist in Escondido. Because we have over 150,000 people that live here in Escondido, there is so many communities and technically there are so many variances when it comes to home prices. So the transportation is going to be something that you definitely want to have. You definitely want to have a car. You don't want to, of course, like have too many vehicles because depending on where you live, where your new home is going to be, you may or may not have access to be able to park your car on the road. There is some communities here in Escondido where you're not allowed to park your car on the road. You have to park in your driveway. So you just some things that you definitely want to be aware of. And with that comes number three the actual neighborhoods. That is gonna be our next con for Escondido. So when it comes to the neighborhood, something that I was talking about just a second ago was the fact that there is so many variances when it comes to home prices. So look, you could technically be still in Escondido over by Del Dios Highway and your home is gonna range anywhere between a million and a half to $3 million, where vice versa, you could be in the heart of downtown Escondido and then your home prices are going to range anywhere between about the middle 500s to the middle 600s where on the other side of the road in old escondido you're going to be even finding a home in old escondido which technically is a historic home at 2.65 million dollars so i mean the variance when it comes to city and home prices in escondido um, is pretty big and then when you look at like let's say mary lane home prices over by mary lane on the back side of san pasquale high school you're going to be finding homes anywhere between 750 to about a million, a million and a half, depending on the view and the lot that you're currently going to be buying. Um, and then also making sure that the schools, which we're going to be talking about in just a second, but also depending on the school where it is in relation to your home, that is definitely going to change your home prices because schools in here in Escondido definitely do range and the home prices do get affected by those schools as well. And so when you're looking at the different communities, you wanna make sure that 
One, you're able to park your car if it turns out that you have more than one car. Two, that you check out the actual traffic. I mean, like how much traffic comes up and down that specific neighborhood. For example, like the middle part of Escondido, which is the downtown on the other side on the number streets, when you start going to like 9th, 12th, 13th, like in that spot of Escondido, you're not gonna find a lot of cul-de-sacs. And so therefore you're not gonna be able to have your kids be able to play out in the street so for me, I like the cul-de-sac. I like being able to let my kids out and where they can play in the cul-de-sac and I don't gotta worry about people coming up and down our road. A lot of the time, if, well, like seriously, almost all the time. The only time that you come down in our cul-de-sac is if you live here or you happen to be FedEx, UPS, or somebody driving by with Amazon. That's really the only time that you're gonna be in our cul-de-sac. And so the kids can get to play without having to worry so much about you know what's going to come with cars coming up and down that road. So when you look at like the 9th, 12th, 11th, 13th, you're not gonna find per se that cul-de-sac living as much. And so you wanna make sure that you typically have a backyard. And so that backyard, you are gonna find closer to like that area. However, you're not gonna find on the other side of town, like such as like Harmony Grove. Harmony Grove in that area, they don't have backyards, but they do have like a big, huge, like community size pool and like big huge parks and so that's what they offset with not having a backyard that's not my cup of tea so when it comes to like the cons the community is like massively important when i was looking to leave my house and go buy somewhere else the community was like massively important i was looking at even in valley center because to me i wanted to be able to have my kids out in the front be able to have them be able to play not have to worry about so many cars and so depending on where you buy in escondido that con could be pretty massive when mm. it comes to the neighborhoods you could maybe not find yourself letting your kids out in the front as much as you per se wanted to so honestly the type of neighborhood when it comes to escondido i mean there's so many places that you can live there's over 150,000 of us living here. So obviously there's a lot of different options. And of course we also have new construction and things like that, but you just wanna make sure that you check out the area, check out the like the community, check out really, is this gonna be like good for you and your family or good for just yourself? Or is this gonna be like a temporary type of living where you're trying to just rent for a little while? Um, different areas come with different cons. I mean, there are some parts of Escondido, to be quite honest, that I would not find myself living in. And mm -hmm. so um, you wanna make sure that where you're going to live when you do find your home is where you wanna be there for at least three to five years. With this market, you're not gonna be in like this flip and sell type of situation. So you're not gonna buy today and sell tomorrow. You're gonna need to hold on to your home for at least three to five years. So before you move, you definitely wanna check out those neighborhoods, check out which ones best work for you because again, there's a lot of them. Okay, so now on to number four on the cons of why not to move to Escondido, California, and that's gonna be the schools. Okay, look, so when it comes to the schools, honestly, we just have a bad rap. It seems like a lot of our schools end up not having like the best ratings. And according to schools.org, um, and just doing a little bit of research when it comes to niche.com as well, you're finding that our schools have ratings, you know, anywhere between three to five out of 10. Um, some of our schools end up being in the six to the 10 rating, but we have over 50 schools and 39 of them are the public schools. And then we have 11 private schools. We have so many schools here in Escondido that literally just in Escondido Union School District, they have almost 19,000 kids just in the 39 public schools. So obviously there is a lot of kids in our district. We have a very big community. So one thing that you gotta keep in mind is that when you start looking at like, let's say San Marcos, they have a much lower population. When it comes to Valley Center, again, much lower population. In Valley Center, you're looking at 11,000 people in Valley Center. So when we start comparing the populations, we're looking at Escondido at 151,300 people. And then we start comparing it to San Marcos. And then we're looking at a population of 95,355 people. So while that is almost 60,000 difference in population of people, you start looking at that to Valley Center. I mean, Valley Center, we're looking at a population of 11,000 people. So of course the population is also gonna take bearing into like the schools. And then also the many different schools that we have in Escondido. With that being said, look, I have grown up here in Escondido. I grew up through all of this, the schools. I 
I went to Oak Hill and Orange Glen and San Pasqual and then um, over to Hidden Valley. I mean, all of these schools are amazing schools in their own right. There's a lot of things that these teachers actually do teach our kids that I wouldn't move anywhere else. Could you, could I, yes, technically move to Valley Center or San Marcos? Yes, absolutely I could. However, I love Escondido. I love our city. And so when you look at the 151,000 people, there is so many positives that outweigh like the negatives within our ratings when it comes to the schools. So take that with a grain of salt when it comes to like those numbers, because the numbers are truly just numbers and really has to do a lot with the kind of what you bring to the table when it comes to a parent, when it comes to myself, I'm very involved. And so even though one school district or one school is not as good as another, you still gotta take the time to make sure that your kid knows what they're doing, right? So with that being said, when you look at like the schools here in Escondido, we do have quite a bit. We also have private schools. Then we have like a charter school such as Heritage. Heritage School here in Escondido, you can actually go to elementary as well as middle and then also in the high school. The high school is actually across the street from the main school. But when it comes to that, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get into. When it comes to Heritage, one, you either have to live in the per se district of the city of, um, of Heritage where you can be able to get in to that school, which is on Oak Hill Drive. However, a lot of the time you end up in a lottery because, a lot, because of this school being such a great school, you end up finding that there is hundreds and hundreds of kids that try to get into the school every single year. And so every single November, they end up doing a lottery literally just to see who can be added into this school um, for the following year. And just so you get a heads up, if you have one of your kids in there, it does not mean you automatically get your second kid inside of Heritage. So it's just things to think about when it looks at the different schools. So of course, when you're looking at the different um, homes that you're gonna be buying, of course, you're gonna be looking at the school district and you're gonna be looking at the school rating. Um, also make sure that you go out to those schools and talk to the principals and maybe you find something that you didn't find um, just by searching the web. So like I said, there's a variety of schools here in Escondido. There's actually 17 elementary schools, then there's five middle schools, and then there's three main high schools. But remember what I said before, there's over 50 of them, right? So over 50, that means that there's a whole bunch of other schools. There's also the charter school that I was talking about, and then there's also the at-home learners that we also do, and then there's like Classical Academy that's also located here in Escondido. So we have a lot of options when it comes to school. So depending on what you're, flavor is for school, we probably got it here in Escondido, which is probably more so, if you think about it, kind of like a pro and a con all at the same time. Okay, so now on to number five, and that's going to be our crime rate. Uh -oh. So here in Escondido, we actually have a higher percentage of crime rate in comparison to the national average. With that being said, it's relative. I mean, I've again, lived here my entire life and I've only encountered one time out of almost 40 years where something like this has ever happened. And that was where we were broken into in our home when we lived in an apartment back, I mean, like when I was four. I mean, so that was a long time ago. So it's not per se as common from what my um, encounter has been through living here in the city for Escondido. Um, but yes, if you look at the statistics, you will find that Escondido does have a higher crime rate in comparison to the national average. Aww. So some stats for you is that the chances of you being a victim of a property crime is one out of every 51. And so something for you to know about, also FBI says that we are not one of the most safest cities um, when it comes to the national average. Again, take it with a grain of salt. I, I've lived here my entire life. It's not something that you see very often. Yes, there is crime and yes, there's crime everywhere you go. But according to the FBI, apparently we're not the most uh, safest place. Mm -hmm. But then you look at our population and then in comparison to our population, in comparison to this crime rate, Apparently, our population actually shows that we have a lower average, lower possibility of crime rate um, and a lower crime percentage in general in comparison to other cities that have our large population as what we do here at 151,300 people. So um, when you look at the crime rate, you can't just look at that percentage. You gotta remember that how big a population is within that city. 
if you compare that to Valley Center, if you compare that to San Marcos, I mean, or if you compare it to any other neighboring cities, you're going to find them at a smaller population. So therefore, the crime rate isn't going to be as bad. One out of every 51, well, we have 151,000 people. San Marcos has 96,000 people. So when you look at those two numbers, that's a very big difference in comparison to what you could or could not have in crime because you don't got the population in there. So yes, we do have some cons here in Escondido when you decide to move here in Escondido. However, take it with a grain of salt. Depending on where you end up living, whether it's in one side of Mary Lane or the other side of Del Dios, or you wanna go live in Harmony Grove, there is so many places that you can find and live here um, for a really long time. And so when you're ready to make that move, you definitely want to give us a call, send us a text or an email and definitely reach out to us. We definitely got your back when moving here to San Diego. And make sure that you hit that subscribe button and click that little bell so that you're reminded every single time we release a new video because we're releasing them every single week and we're gonna be now starting to do new vlogs so that way you can really kind of travel and see inside of the city here coming up real soon. So don't forget to hit some of these videos right over here so that way you can also check out the other videos on my channel here in Escondido and in San Diego to see more about what it's like to eat, live, sleep, and play here in San Diego. And until next time, see you later.